Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The sun is shining very brightly through the windows. They're beautiful, but it's a little difficult to see up here, so think about us when we're trying to sing today, okay? Um, our first hymn is Above All, Chorus Book, page 122. Uh, and please stand as we sing. Good person. She passed away yesterday. 
we send our sympathies to the Carol Thomas family. Carol passed away yesterday. Will you join in the call to worship in your bulletin? Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus, Jesus said, said to her, her your, your brother, brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Now what about us? Do we believe this? We believe, we believe that, that Jesus, Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, our Lord and Savior. Our next hymn is My Life is in You, Lord, on page 111 in the Chorus Book, and we're singing it through.
forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in our faith. Help us to place ourselves in your care. Slow us down just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and truly enjoy and share the blessings you have given to us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have my Jesus Calling book with me today. And I found something in Philippians, Psalms, and Songs uh, that fit really well for, I think, the offering time. Rejoice and be thankful. As you walk with me through this day, practice trusting and thanking me all along the way. Trust is the channel through which my peace flows into you. Thankfulness lifts you up above your circumstances. I do my greatest works through people with grateful, trusting hearts. Rather than planning and evaluating, practice trusting and thanking me continually. This revolution will change your life. Will the deacons come forward, please? Lazarus was sick. He 
was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there for two more days. And when he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea, they said, but Rabbi, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you're going back? And Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they will see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus, is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus the twin, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them at the loss of their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. On his uh, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But you know, but I know, that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, Well, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. And she said, the teacher is here. He is asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. And when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforted her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. And when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. The son of the said, Could he not, who opened the eyes of the blind man, have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been in there for four days. And Jesus said, Did I not? tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And he said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. From John 12.
six days before Passover. Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And so they gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. And Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas, Judas Iscariot, one of the, his disciples, he was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. And Jesus said, Leave her alone, so she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. This is the reading. Thanks be to God. If you would join with me. And as you sing this next hymn, it's called I Believe the Answer's on the Way. I want you to think about the words as if you were Mary and Martha asking for Jesus to come, knowing that the answer was on the way. Jesus himself 
rises from the dead, and he comes back to life, proving that nothing is impossible with Jesus. We're going to find ourselves in a lot of impossible situations. A lot of times when things in life let us down. Jesus will never let us down. Okay? Why don't you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that your miracles just keep abounding. And just like you were raised, you also raised Lazarus from the dead. And thank you for reminding us that you are the resurrection and the life. In your name we pray. Amen. My life is in you! Who's our life in? Jesus. And why do we put our life in him? Because he is the resurrection and the life. How many here have actually heard those three stories put together at one time? About one family. Well, we'll concentrate on like one story at a time. And we'll talk about it in depth. But I think it loses something if you don't hear that whole thing together. Think about your family and maybe some of the friends that you have. Loved ones. Did you just have one story? Or did you have multiple stories of multiple times that you got together and things happened, the good, the bad, the ugly, the exceptional? Well, we see right away with, I'm going to move. This is the first time that's recorded. Now, I have a feeling that Jesus grew up somehow with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Because there was a connection there with Lazarus. We don't know how. Scriptures don't say. But the first time that Jesus shows up at the house, it says Mary and Martha were there, and Martha was the one that was getting everything ready because she had a house full of people coming, which is Jesus and all the disciples. Okay, for all the women that are here, if you knew that Jesus and his disciples were coming to your house, how many would start freaking out and doing everything to get ready? Clean, cook, be thinking about a million things, right? Right. To the point of you would be so exhausted that when you finally got there and you realize you're nowhere near ready for them, right? And you're still doing everything. And then you happen to run into the other room and you notice that your little sister or brother kicking back in the room with Jesus, doing nothing. It's from Eric. Martha's at. And she goes, Lord, <laughs> I think this is interesting. We don't know if she told Mary. Maybe she told Mary one, two, three, four, five times. Hey, I need your help. I need your help. We don't know that. But it gets to the point that she says to Jesus, tell my sister <laughs> to get in here and help me. And instead of doing what Martha asked, what, is, what does Jesus say? He says, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Ooh, many things. It wasn't just one thing. It wasn't like, oh, this is just getting dinner ready. She, her mind was on a million other things. He says, but really only one thing is needed. Mary is sitting at my feet, listening. Now, you have to realize, the house that they had, we live in very big two-story houses and everything, where they could have been in one part of the house and Mary and Martha would have been in another, right? There wasn't that way then. I mean, it was two story, but it was close. So whatever Jesus would have said, Martha would have been hearing it, even though she was preparing lunch. It's <laughs> tight quarters. But where was her mind? Her heart was in the right place, but her mind was everywhere but listening. Mary's chosen to listen, and you're not going to take that away from her. That's the only other mood that we have there. Then it says some time goes by. Now we know that they're still close, right? But we only have three little instances. But you got to know that that family had to be really close to Jesus if they're mentioned in there three times. So the next time, Lazarus, the one whom he loves, becomes sick, very sick. And they sent word to Jesus. Now you have to realize that Jesus had been to Jerusalem prior. This is getting right down to where we're at now. 
This is at the end of his ministry. He had been there before. The last time he was there, the Jews tried to have him killed. And so he had not been back until he knew it was his time that last week. And so they call for him and they say, Master, the one you love is sick. He's dying. You need to come. You need to come now. And then it says, so when Jesus heard the Lazarus is sick, he stayed there for two more days. You may go on and say, what? This is somebody he loved? Okay, we've just been talking about the last few weeks. Who did, who did Jesus heal? He healed Jairus' daughter, right? And that was in route. I mean, he had, he had just missed it because of this other woman that needed to be healed. But Jesus said, do you believe? Jairus says, yes. And so he goes to the house. The daughter had just died. She probably hadn't been dead more than a half hour, maybe even an hour. I don't know. But when he gets there, he raises her from the dead. Now, if you were a spectator and skeptical, what would you say? She wasn't really dead. A little bit of time on transpired, right? Jesus healed many people and raised several from the dead. And yet with each one, eh, still within this three-day window. Why do I bring this up? Because there was a superstition that said if somebody had only been dead for three days, there was a possibility their soul just kind of went around them and they could come back to life. Who here ever watched Princess Bride? Like that's, yeah, okay. Is it not dead, just mostly dead? Dead, dead is all dead. But if it's within a three-day window, nah, he's still just mostly dead. Jesus waits two more days. And then he says, let us go back to Judea. Now the disciples are telling him, they're recounting, they're going, hello, the last time we went there, the Jews tried to have you stoned. Why would you even think of going back? And Jesus gets into this whole banter about, well, Lazarus is sleeping, and they go, oh, he's sleeping, he's going to get better. It's not worth risking your life for. I don't care how close you two are. So that Jesus has to tell them plainly, right? Lazarus is dead, and I have waited an extra two days. But then he says, and for your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so you may be elite. This is three years into this. How many times has Jesus done the miraculous? How many times has he healed the miraculous, raised the dead, and yet <laughs> they still don't get it. They're still forgetting it. Thomas, the one who was called the doubter, is the only one who pipes up and says, then let us also go that we may die with you. Does that sound like words of a doubt? No. He was all in. Now when Jesus gets there, he says he doesn't go right to the tomb. He doesn't go right into Bethany. Now Bethany is actually, it said, two miles from Jerusalem. So if you, if I'm pretty sure, if you go where Jerusalem is, you go down into the Kindred Valley, and you come up to the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, and on the top of the Mount of Olives, and just a little bit to the side, is where Bethany is at. Why is this important? Ah, it's going to come up again. Jesus is a little off distance from Bethany. And Martha finds out he's there, and she comes running out to him, and she says, if you had just been there. <laughs> what did Jarvis think? I was so close. I was bringing him. She says, if you would just been here, I know my brother wouldn't have died. And then you have the Jews going, he healed everybody else. Why didn't he heal him? He loved him. But Martha says, but I know. This is the woman who had so many things on her heart and on her mind. She wasn't listening to Jesus the first time. She says, but I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Something had to have changed in Martha's heart. She had a relationship with him unlike any other. Those are the most bold words. I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. When all seemed hopeless, <laughs> Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And 
And Martha thinking, she goes, yeah, 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 I know, I'll rise again on the resurrection day, right? You can hear this loop that's going in her head. I've heard the words. I know what you've talked about. I know I'll get to see him again. But that's not helping my pain right now. My brother is gone. Jesus has this wonderful interaction that's listed in our scriptures. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you see the I am? What is I am? The name of God. I, God, am the resurrection and the life. And the one who believes in me will live. Even though they die. And whoever lives believing in me will never die. So he's talking about both. He's talking about the end game, which he was right on. But he's saying, I am Lord over it all. And I can do whatever the Father will let me do. Then he asked her point blank, do you believe this? Well, she believed it because she just said, I know that nothing is impossible. But he did this for her sake. For her to say, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who has come into the world. Who else was with Martha at this time? There were others. Was this just for her benefit? No, I think it was for the others that were listening as well. Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And Martha runs back and she goes and she gets Mary and she says, the teacher is here. Now, does it say that Jesus went back to the house? Nope. Mary came to him. And she fell at his feet. Weeping. So we see the interaction with Martha. But now we see the interaction with Mary, who is so distraught. And it said that the people that were with her came rushing with her, thinking she was going to the grave. Remember I told you with Jairus that there were paid professionals who were mourners? It had to be the worst occupation. They were paid just to be with that person to scream and cry and mourn so that way they could mourn and to go with them wherever they went. That would be too much for me. So they are on her heels, and she comes and she says, Lord, if you had only been here, if you had only been here. And then as we know the rest of the story, there is a, a major touching point right here. And I, I don't know how many people think about this. Jesus was experiencing their raw emotion in the presence. How hard did that have to be? He loved these people like no other, right? They were his beloved. And yet he purposely had to wait two more days knowing the pain and the inner turmoil that was being caused in their hearts, knowing that their brother was dead. Even though he knew that he was about ready to raise him from the dead, what did Jesus do in their grief? He wept. He sat right with them in that raw emotion and experienced the human raw emotion and wept. And then he said, roll the stone. Now you know it was Martha again who biked up, not Mary. <laughs> And she says, oh, Lord, no, 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 right? She's the one who just got through saying, I believe nothing is impossible. And yet she's telling him, you can't move the stone. Why? Because he's going to stink. He's been there for four days. The four days, because Jesus wants to make sure that there is no superstition that said he is just almost dead. That he is dead, dead. It doesn't say he goes in and he waves a magic wand. It, just, it says he just stands there and commands him, Lazarus, come out. And it says Lazarus gets up and walks out. Can you imagine if you were there experiencing this? I can't. The emotions. I mean, here you've been weeping and weeping for morning, and now you're like bawling your eyes out for joy. Because that which was dead is alive. And Jesus has proved to everybody that he 
He is the resurrection and the life. Now, after that happens, it's not all glory and sunshine. And this is the problem. When we pray to God for an answer and we get the answer, then sometimes we think that it's all going to be better. Well, no, it's not all better. Because then guess who had a target on their forehead? Lazarus. Besides Jesus, the Jews had set up to kill Lazarus. So a so little bit more time goes by. Not a lot. But we're getting very close to Holy Week. And it says that this is actually six days before Passover. So if you do the math and you count it back, it's really on Sunday. And it says Jesus comes to Mary and Martha's house again with Lazarus. And they're all there and they're all reclining and they're all eating. They're what? Two miles from Jerusalem. This is getting ready for Sunday is what? Palm Sunday. The day that they go and they choose the sacrificial lamb to bring home to their house to keep for that week. I wrestled with this in my head and it's like, well, no, that could be. If he came in on Saturday, he came in, he spent Shabbat on Friday night, Saturday, and then he's there Sunday morning. And there's something that takes place. They're not in Mary and Martha's home. They're in Simon the leper, who Jesus healed. Same town. And it says Mary takes this pound of pure nard, expensive, expensive perfume. And it says she anoints his feet with it. This is an extravagant sacrifice. But did you ever think about it as an act of worship? She was honoring him. She was glad to sacrifice something that was so valuable to her. That's the only way she could express her love to Christ. Now, there's another reason why that needed to happen. And you don't catch this. It hit me last night. You don't catch this unless you think about it in terms of Palm Sunday. What happened before a king could become a king? He had to be what? Anointed with oil. The high priests were anointed with oil. Who is Jesus? Our high priest and our high king. This woman literally in the act of anointing his feet and he's talking about preparing for burial but there was another, another big reason for that. Because he is about to get ready to send his disciples to find a cult to get on ride down the street. Now, why did I say this just came about? Because we had something exceptional, phenomenal happen that was, it was only a God thing. So, because of prom, I, I had to cut my, short, my trip short. I wasn't going to get to do the extension of the petrol. I was really bummed about that, but we were going to be back in time for prom. After 20-some years of always having prom, on the first week of April, they changed it this year, and it does. It changed the 15th of April. So, I messaged the gal with her tour, and I said, well, just, just put this out there. Our plans changed if there happens to be somebody who cancels out and you have two more spots who would love to go on the extension. So shortly after, about two, three days, I get a message, and she goes, we just had two people drop up. She says, extension chores, if you want. I was like, yes, but here's the catch. They'd already got rid of the plane tickets. So you can't fly out with everybody else. And I'm sorry, but it's going to cost a little more, but you're going to have to stay here an extra day. Okay, we're not thinking, not thinking what the extra day was. It wasn't until after we got to looking, we will literally be there on Palm Sunday, and we are going to get to do the walk with the palm branches on Palm Sunday down the same road. I've been down that road before, but not on that day. In that way. And it's at 2 30 in the afternoon, and that's what got me thinking. If it's at 2 30, is that when Jesus actually went down the road? And if so, this all fits. So if she anointed him in the morning, he had been anointed king and high priest. And that afternoon, a mile away, he gets on the donkey and he rides down to everybody singing, Hosanna in the high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, in the highest. As the sacrifice.
sacrificial lamb as they are taking on their lambs and not even realizing what Jesus is about to do. These three events of this man show love in action. Nothing else. It is all about love and relationship. Jesus turned Martha's focus back onto what was important and it was him. Jesus battles earthly emotions and rides that earthly roller coaster with Mary and Martha, even though he knows that God is allowing him to raise Lazarus from the dead. And Mary gives up what was the most valuable possession that she had to use as an act of worship for her Savior. And most importantly, because of that love, it extends not just to those three people, but to you and I and everyone else who believes in him and calls him Savior. He reminds us that he is the resurrection and the life. And everyone who believes and receives him will never die, but have everlasting life.
would join with me in our next hymn. This is one of my favorite ones. His name is Life. We're going to sing it through twice.
May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.